Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I want to give you some sort of writing update. Usually I've been doing these videos every four months but since we're in the run up to me actually bringing a book out I thought it might be beneficial to actually talk about the process of my writing every month rather than trying to feel a rambling video every four months, you can have a rambling video every one and see how that helps. So I finished the book at the start of February, which was documented in the last video, and then because of overtime I didn't really look at it properly until two months later, which was the start of this month. Um, the book is with my friend Lindsay who helps me edit the books, she's done well, most of the good things that you saw in the first book were thanks to Lindsay coming to me and telling me that I hadn't actually finished writing jokes. Like, I'd set them up but never got to the punchline. Which is just really the story of my life. Anyway, being the exceptionally smart person that I am, I also decided that I'd go through and I'd look and, you know, I'd find those spelling mistakes that are want to happen and those places where sentences don't make sense. And also, I need to, let's just have a quick side note here. I also had to find the place where I talked about Waitrose Coffee. Because when I, was, when I was first writing this book, you could still get a free cup of coffee from Waitrose if you had your Waitrose card. Now, Waitrose caught on to the fact that people were just going in and getting a £2.20 coffee for free and leaving. So, now you've got to purchase something, which really just threw this entire joke out of the window. So I had to go and find that. Anyway, we'll come back now. So, the smart thing that I did was rather than edit the start of the book, I edited from the middle of the book to the end, and then went back and edited the first five. And now I'm going back through the final, final five monologues again. And I know that I really want to edit the, the uh, speech towards the end, which is, you know, like, it's the culmination of everything within this book. It's just a certain character revealing how they feel about everything, and, it, you know, it's one of those speeches to show how far a character has come. And I feel like it starts strong, and then just ultimately becomes watered down, and I want to see whether I still feel the same way upon rereading it now. And I also have to find out whether I've called anyone else Alan. Something I do within these books is I will always talk about side characters that you are never going to meet. I think everyone does it. It's a way of world building. It's something that I really like in Talking Heads and Victoria Wood. And actually in any comedy you talk about characters that you've never seen and make a joke about them to emphasise a point. Honestly, I'm having such struggles with my hair today. I don't know why this isn't fair. Anyway, it just turns out that over three monologues, I've called the side character Alan. So, so far, we have a... If, if you put all the stories together, we have, we have a gay farmer who steals hyacinths from Harold's allotment. And I wasn't really trying to create this side story, but you know, if it's a continuous thing throughout the book, you could have two stories within one here, and who, who, does, who doesn't like getting a bargain? I've also been happy upon this reread because I was really worried that the, the dissolution of one character's ideals that happens within this book wouldn't really come across very well. I worried that it just happened really suddenly, and I also worried that the character wasn't the same character that she'd been in the first book, and it seems that I kind of actually really enjoy the book a lot more than I thought that I would. I was bogged down by a lot of worries and self-doubt throughout the writing of this book, which is more than I've ever had or experienced before. So it was really nice to see that although I was plagued by this self-doubt. I was actually able to craft a story that I enjoy, even if nobody else enjoys it. Um, I can remember writing Educating Erin, which is the fourth monologue, and I was writing that and I was really enjoying it. I was at work <laughs> and, well, I was volunteering. I was volunteering, it was a Thursday, I can remember this now. I was volunteering, it was a Thursday, and basically I started writing on a little 
scrap of paper and the manager came out and she saw what I was doing and honestly I thought well here I you know I'm gonna be in a bit of trouble here instead she went and got me a notebook because she's like you can't be writing on that so she brought me a notebook and I started writing and then it was just this process and I can remember just writing all throughout my shift really really good worker here um, and then I went to the writers group at lunchtime and I just went and sat down and continued writing and I was even writing throughout the walk workshop and I feel very sorry to whoever was leading that day I can't remember who you were I'm sorry I was very stuck in writing educating Erin and obviously then I just haven't looked at it for nearly a year now and it's just one that it turns out that looking back on it I enjoyed it and writing it and you know I really enjoyed this process and what I have now I enjoy and I'm about to read a monologue called Flu which I know I've read before and it's a strange one for me to read because this was after the halfway point um, this was one I was worried that wouldn't work because it's set in a bedroom for the entirety of the monologue. Harold and Doris are laid up in bed with flu and I was certain that it wasn't going to work. I was certain there was, I can just remember being so certain that things wouldn't work in this book because they weren't exactly the same as the first book and you know, I'm not trying to parallel the narrative in every single way. I mean, it's one of the things that I despised about High School Musical as a child. I'm using this as an analogy here. I am not writing a High School Musical themed book. If I was, D Disney would probably be suing me right now. Please don't sue me. Anyway, in High School Musical, if you've watched any of those films, in fact, if you've ever watched a Disney film, they all have the same setup. But if you watch the High School Musical film and you watch the first one and you watch the second one, they were carbon copies of each other. And that was one of my worries in this book, that I wasn't making a carbon copy of the first book. And I don't think that I have. I think that there is more talk of characters having friendships. I was really worried about a certain character that I have introduced in this book. Um, I was worried that she wasn't going to be featured as highly as I wanted her to be featured. And I do still have a worry about the antagonist, that I might not have featured her enough, but I think towards the end of the book she's there enough to really show how she's an antagonist. Editing, to me, is the worst part of writing. It is something that I despise, everybody knows that I hate it, I, if I could get out of it at uni I would, but I know that it brought on some of my best work. We had to write a script for our, for one of our module things, and so I adapted Juniper Brown, and just wrote the first ten minutes of a script, and, and the finished product was so far removed from what I had originally written because what I originally wrote was very packed with information and very packed with scenes and I realised this is just an introduction to the world and I cut everything down and I made scenes go from that were reams and reams of pages like I can remember cutting a three minute scene well what would have been a three minute scene down to I think three paragraphs it was basically a real that was a realisation that there had to be an objective for every single scene and was this objective being fulfilled here or could it be fulfilled later and ultimately it often could so I don't use I don't try I don't try and use the same thing for when I'm editing the monologues but I do find it difficult because I'm also one of these writers who it takes me years to become objective towards a piece and to stop thinking that every single line is flawless and amazing and the best thing since sliced bread. I'm lucky with Doris that all the characters have very strong voices that I've been writing them for six years now so I almost have a very 
I, I almost find it quite easy, quite comfortable, as I said in the last video, because I am able to get into that voice rather quickly. And obviously it's a worry when I eventually do go on to write something else that I'm not going to be able to find a different voice for these characters. But I am quite hopeful that I will end up with something worthwhile that really talks about something that I wanted to talk about. Also, if you want to like fit it towards any sort of election stuff, when we get closer towards, you know, when we get towards it, we could use like the election and Storm Doris to try and sell the book. Um, I don't know. I'm not really one of these people who's very good at selling things. I still need to get in touch with libraries and ask whether they'll let me go and read. I still need to figure out when I'm going to try and pass my driving test because, you know, we had that failure in November and then in February someone crashed into me when I was trying to do my second test. Obviously, it was actually their fault they rear-ended the car as I'd approached a junction and I don't think I'm ever going to lose this anger and frustration I feel at that moment. Um, and then we have the overtime, and so a lot of stuff is getting in the way of this book, but I am still hoping, I mean obviously we're not bringing it out on July 1st anymore, we're going to try and bring it out on August 31st, and I'm really hopeful that that's going to happen. In the meantime, I'm getting to edit, I'm getting to work on the third book, which is really still a lot of thinking about what's going to happen and where I want to place things, and um, see which characters are going to end up in this one, because ultimately n new characters and old characters want to appear whenever they like, and I am also thinking about books in the future and then I have to stop doing that, and remember that we do actually have to have this book out and finished this year just for the sake of our own soul. Anyway, this video might not have said anything at all. Um, if you do actually have any questions about the writing process, feel free to ask the questions in the comments section and I will either reply or record another video talking about that question. Because Lord knows that I can talk about writing all day long and I do really enjoy talking about myself. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time, that is all.